we can go ahead and okay. Okay. Uh, it's 430 so we're going to call the meeting to order and the first order of business is approval of the agenda uh, everybody has their computer on it should be up and in, in front of you I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll catch you. Okay. Move approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We have an agenda. And next up is the minutes. There's uh, attachments for two of those, closed session and August 24th. Hopefully you've had a chance to look over those. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the minutes as well. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, they are approved. <clears throat> We're going to move into no action. And we ask that the speakers come up to the podium uh, with our setup tonight or today, this afternoon. Uh, Snyder, uh, Robert Williams, you're up. I believe. Or was there a change there that I didn't catch? That was right. That was the change. That was the change? Do we, okay. Do you okay. want to? Okay. Is Emily supposed to go first? Not on mine. Mm -hmm. F5. I didn't find it just a second ago. When did it change? I still don't show it. F5 is first item under, it's item 4.1. Snyder. Right. Yeah, okay, that's what I had. Yeah. Oh, I thought you. I thought Emily was coming ahead. Of. She was, but before we changed it, she would have been. You're good. You're on track. Yeah. <laughs> He's on two tracks. <laughs> just pick one. The jokes just keep coming. That's a ten million. We yeah. were at twelve million. All right. Uh, thank you all for having me once again. Uh, last month, we uh, came, Pam and myself came and addressed the um, project update where we were from the midterm. Uh, we went over the process and a little bit with the schedule and. Um, Dr. Phipps and the Energy Committee recommended that we give you guys a version of um, what we showed them in July. Now, what we've done is from July to now, we have um, finished evaluating a lot of the energy conservation measures that we were looking at. Uh, we moved out some of the conservation measures that uh, we found paybacks got longer on. Um, and what you're looking at is our project. Now, our goal is to get everyone on the Energy Committee, as well as um, the maintenance staff, the full document, which will be a few hundred page book um, by the end of this uh, week. So once you all have that, this is, this is a very high level overview, um, and I'll, I'll let Pam go through it here in a minute, but um, once you have the book, the goal will be in the next couple of weeks to have you guys figure out exactly what you want this project to look like. Um, meanwhile, in the background, I don't know if you all read the uh, legal notices in the Beaufort Observer, but there was an ad that ran on Friday um, just announcing that on September 28th, our plan is to um, <coughs> for you guys to pass a resolution um, acknowledging that you guys are looking at doing a project. It's just one of the many pieces that go into the local government commission. Um, there's also a, um, a public hearing for finance that lets the public know that if you guys indeed do a project that you have to um, let the public know that you're doing that. So for now, I'm going to have Pam go over that document. And if there's any questions, we can um, field those. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pam Janney. I'm with Schneider Electric here to go over technical details of our proposal, of which you have a summary. And the first piece of that is a lighting retrofit. And we are proposing LED interior and LED exterior retrofits. Um, you've seen these numbers before. There's slight changes. We saw some costs go up. We saw some savings go down. And one of the things I wanted to mention here is that as a result of data we collected during the audit, 
We found that you're actually doing a very good job of turning lights off when rooms and spaces aren't occupied. So uh, you have very low run hours or burn hours on these lights, and it caused overall savings to go down. The good news is you're doing a very good job managing systems now. The impact to the project is uh, less savings. So as a result, we've actually removed two buildings from this scope right now because they don't fit in financially, and that is Northeast Elementary and Southside High School. We are continuing to work and refine some of those scope <coughs> items, very specific line items within the retrofit for those two buildings to see if we can get a portion back in. Those are just new, those are your newest schools, so the lighting systems are newer, they're more efficient, and they just don't deliver as much savings. Combine that with the lower operating hours, and it's just less opportunity for savings. Um, Moving on to building automation system, this does cover all facilities, including all the schools as well as your plan operations building, your uh, central offices, and the, um, all, those mis all those other buildings. So this uh, solves a big problem for the plan operations facilities personnel because we integrate everything into one front end. So they can access everything from one front end. Also, they'll be able to access systems from any web-enabled device. So a laptop, a, a smartphone. Um, and we will be getting rid of all pneumatic actuators at uh, this, this school, and then Washington High School still have some pneumatic valve and damper actuators, and all those will be gone. Um, we are looking at water conservation uh, measures in all the facilities. Uh, as well as plug load control, and this specifically applies to things like uh, large copiers, printers, uh, things that are plugged in and draw power even when they're not in use. So when the building's unoccupied, those will be shut off totally. Uh, we address uh, building envelope in all facilities, and this is largely ceiling areas where uh, uncontrolled, unconditioned outside air can infiltrate. It causes humidity issues and other uh, additional load on your HVAC systems. Uh, vending misers, this is a unoccupied uh, building control basically to shut off vending miser or vending machine compressors when there's not going to be any activity for a long period of time. Uh, we are addressing refrigeration system upgrades. This is basically all the schools that have cafeterias with walk-in freezers and coolers as well as the main plant operations freezer uh, so these are uh, replacing evaporator fan motors with more efficient equipment, uh, doing more advanced control on dehumidification cycles, uh, and defrost cycles, excuse me, and dehumidification around the door to prevent doors from sweating and freezing. Uh, we address uh, two uh, chiller uh, cool. issues. One, uh, the air-cooled condenser, air-cooled chiller at Bath Elementary School will be getting condenser fan pack controls, which is basically uh, controlling energy use when it's not on peak. And then we also address at Washington High School to complement the new chillers that were replaced in this past spring uh, to replace the cooling towers and pumps. Uh, that kind of complete that system upgrade. That is a longer payback item. Largely, that's just a capital item that we're able to address as part of this project, so you don't have to come up with extra capital money, and it does solve some operational and maintenance problems for the uh, plant operations staff. We are proposing variable frequency drives on some single zone air handlers at Southside High School, and that's just to uh, vary the outdoor air uh, volume when it's not as many people in that space. There's just a few areas there that that applies to. We've also proposed for Northside High School, this school, a uh, pony boiler. So right now um, you have one gas-fired boiler that provides heat for the building and it's a very large uh, boiler. And you also have a domestic hot water heater that's uh, fired on natural gas. This actually, this piece of equipment would replace the, nat, uh, the domestic hot water heater, but also run during shoulder periods when you don't have a full load on the boiler, but you need some heat, uh, especially if you're using that for reheat. That's a really uh, efficient way of um, 
delivering the hot water, plus it reduces your long-term operation and maintenance costs on your bigger boiler, won't have to cycle as much, should get less wear and tear. Uh, we know you've already uh, implemented some uh, kitchen conversions at Eastern, uh, and we've got scope in here to finish that out as well as to do a similar retrofit at John, uh, John Cotton Taylor Elementary School. Uh, one is electric to natural gas, the other one is propane to natural gas, and just right now your natural gas costs are much lower, so it's a really just a cost savings measure. Um, we're looking at an energy recovery unit at Southside High School. And uh, we've also talked with the transportation director about a nitrogen tire filling system. This uh, helps uh, improve fuel economy on the fleet, not just the buses, but also uh, auto and truck and tractor fleet. So he's pretty uh, happy about that, has a pretty good payback. Um, one of the larger items that we're proposing for, uh, for the district is the generator buyout, the contracts for P.S. Jones and Washington High School. Right now, you're under contract to uh, Power Secure, and they operate and maintain those generators. And the savings that you get from the utility, they basically take in a contract fee to them, so you're paying them monthly. That savings. Uh, there is a buyout con uh, clause in both those contracts that allows you to buy the generators direct, and then you get to keep all those energy savings from the utility. Uh, likewise, we're proposing peak shaving generators at the schools listed there, Bath, Eastern, John Small, Ed Tech, and John Cotton Taylor. Those are not generators to be able to operate the facility um, without the, necessarily without uh, the grid or in an emergency situation. Rather, they're peak shaving. They're installed solely for the purpose of reducing your on-peak power costs, and they have a very good payback. Um, so there's several uh, scope items related to that. We've also done an energy and water bill audit, identified some savings there. And then lastly, there's a couple schools where uh, the classrooms are using uh, televisions as clocks for the classroom. So we're proposing to turn those off. They make a, you know, kind of a nuisance background level noise and they also use a lot of power when you could just have a little battery operated clock. So these costs that you see in the column on the left are all inclusive with the exception of the items that are at the bottom, uh, which are our engineering and design costs, our investment grade audit costs, bonds, the guarantee security instrument, our project management services, uh, which includes your on-site supervision, contract administration, construction management, and then commissioning services, first year training, and then our M uh, measurement and verification setup fees you can see at the bottom there. So I'll take any questions on scope or technical items. And my, another thing, I don't know how you all want to handle this, so um, we'll take all feedback. Um, once everyone gets the report, we can make it accessible um, to anyone who wants it electronically. I can print out um, copies of it, but um, as I mentioned, you know they are they are a little larger um, and use a lot of paper. But the whole the goal is um, over the next couple of weeks we we do have um, a request out um, to figure out what the interest rate is going to be at this time um, for a project. Not necessarily this project, but a project we kind of put in a not to exceed amount because we expect. Um, there to be some changes, and we met with uh, with Stan and Russ and Pete today, and um, got a little bit of feedback from them. We're meeting with the county again on Thursday. Um, we met with them last week, and we're going to meet with them Thursday to see um, if there's any other feedback, uh, thoughts, feelings on their end. So we want questions and feedback in these next two weeks um, because we do kind of enter into a long-term um, review process. Once a project is agreed upon, it's not, it's not done. It has to go through the Department of Treasury, it has to go through the Department of Public Instruction, and it has to go through the State Energy Office, um, as well as your third-party engineer for review. So, um, so once we get the project that you guys everyone agrees upon um, we will 
put that package together with all these documents um, and submit it to those groups for, for a review. And they require a month and then it'll come back to you guys again for, um, for your final blessing and, and contract signing. So we're near the end, but there's still a lot to be done. Um, and we, we appreciate all feedback and want uh, a discussion not only with you guys, but with maintenance as well. So what questions do you have for us? I had, I, I was trying to do some quick math and I'm certainly not anywhere near being knowledgeable on, um, on, on some of this, but, but I have concerns about three. One was 1B, the 701,000, um, that would be uh, over 16 years. Is that how I'm to read that? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. just a savings of $43 a month. Uh, is that is that how you do that math? Uh, we typically look at the whole year. We look what, at an annual yeah. an annual payback. Well, I mean, but, but I'm, I'm I, but yeah. yeah okay, and then the months and the years. And so years. it's forty three dollars a month, which to me didn't seem like a big savings. And then um, under six, and I'm looking at the ones that have a a, a much longer payout uh, payback. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The one that was three hundred and twenty six thousand. Um, which was 10B over 55 years, uh, that came down to $6 a month savings uh, for 55 years, which with the exception of one or two of us in here, we probably wouldn't live to see that. But, um, oh, sorry, except for Butch, he'll live a long time. And then, um, and then the one that is 701,000, uh, no, that's the one, first one at 43, the 251,000 which was 22 years, uh, that came to $11 a month. So when I totaled those three up, and they're different payouts, but just like initially, the first few years, what kind of savings we'd see out of $1.278 million would only be $60 a month. Mm -hmm. um, that just didn't sound, that sounded like a little bit of money for, a, I mean, a little bit of savings for a whole lot of money. Um, uh, Convince me otherwise. I will address uh, a couple of them, and I'll let Pam handle the uh, the boiler. Um, first off, the LED exterior retrofits. Um, so it's basically the the lights when it gets dark outside around these campuses, and a lot of that, a lot of the the want from the school and the the maintenance department is security, safety. Um, these LED lights will be a lot brighter than what you have. Um, parking lot lights, lights around schools, things like that. Um, the county even brought it up um, last week when we met with them about how, um, you know, that's a good one for safety and security. Because keep it, keep in mind, you know, the, they're only when it's dark outside is the only time they're on. So that is one of the reasons for your for your lower payback. It does improve um, aesthetic for the schools and also. Some of them are in places that are tough to get to to change out. Um, so from a maintenance standpoint, it, um, it makes them a lot easier um, because they're being changed, you know, half, if not much uh, less than that. So um, that's, that's the exterior lights um, on the schools. Another one, the, uh, the cooling tower. That's basically something that you guys, that we fit into this project that you guys are going to, it's going to have to be replaced soon, um, no matter what. When we changed out the chillers, um, that was an item that we were looking at then and figured we would put it into this project and use, basically use the savings from the low payback stuff to pay for that item. So that's a, that's a $326,000 that you guys don't have to bring out a capital or ask the county for that that's getting covered uh, with this project and like I said once that is done once that part of the project is done it will um, it will increase even more the efficiency of the chillers that are in there now so um, that one I think what's is, the life uh, expectancy of that chiller of uh, the cooling tower yeah cooling it, tower. well the current piece of equipment is basically at the end of its life which is 25 26 years it's at the end of its life now and 
So a new one is going to get another 25 years, which is what your chillers basically got you up until April of this year. Or actually, they started failing last year. So. And then the boiler. <clears throat> Right, so the, the pony boiler installation at Northside High School, uh, really there's the intangibles there are the reduced wear and tear on your larger boiler and then on your uh, domestic hot water heater that's, uh, I think, original to building construction. So that's 30, almost 30 years old, 28 years old, something like that. So. Uh, it's another capital item. Eventually, it'll have to be replaced. We're probably hitting it a little soon, but it does reduce uh, uh, some maintenance costs. And then I think uh, other thing I wanted to mention on the exterior lights right now, we know that you're leasing or renting some vehicles to do the some of the exterior lighting uh, repairs and replacements when those lamps go. And uh, because you control the burn hours with automatically that they, they don't necessarily run the entire uh, night long there's some automatic controls in there that shut them off in the wee wee hours of the morning uh, this would actually this type of retrofit is going to have a longer payback because of that because your operating hours are reduced so you're doing a very good job of that now but that type of retrofit in the next 16 years you probably don't have to touch those lights for 20 so in some of these things you look at, you have to look at as a bit of a capital improvement as well, especially the cooling tower. Um, and so, you know, that's one of the things that people use performance contracting for sometimes is to help boost capital budgets with energy savings. We had, um, we had a couple of like 60, I, I think you have it there. We had a couple of much longer payback items yeah. that everyone at the, at the energy committee meeting kind of looked at us and said, hey, that's not what we're interested in. Um, so we pulled out those and left in the, the ones that, that we felt would be the most beneficial, um, being those, those three that you actually just pointed out. So, um, you know, the whole goal is to keep, um, the whole goal for this project is to keep it at 15 years with every single cost covered. Um, so the, the, financial commitment will be 15 years with every single cost covered um, so having some items that are 22 55 you know you're using those threes and four year payback stuff to to pay for those over the length of a 15-year contract what do you consider um, weatherization that's mostly air sealing, uh, weather stripping on doors, caulking around windows. There's some things when you pop the ceiling tile in certain areas, you'll see uh, air gaps. You'll see daylight in places you shouldn't be seeing daylight. Um, and our um, IGA report will, will show you exactly where all that scope is. But a lot of it you can't really see because it's in spaces uh, above ceilings and things like that. And uh, a lot of the the um, envelope number number three and number six are um, the reason for a lot of your humidity issues. So those two, which which are causing um, in some schools causing damage to the ceilings, the facilities. Um, so those two items. Are, are key to helping with uh, some of the plan operations folks issues that they've been having for uh, a while now. Robert, a uh, yes. question I want to ask you real quick was on the uh, the early one that you presented to us dated on 716 two months ago which uh -huh. was the conceptual one, um, the, the total ECM cost was uh, 7.5 million and you, you mentioned earlier some things had gone up and said so we're now at about eight but after we added in all the other project costs, we came up over 12 million. What's the difference in these? Have you got everything figured in here? We, we moved. Um, because on the other document, uh, the difference between the ECM and the total is 4.4 million, and this is only 1.7 million. We moved these two and rolled them into, that was, into the project labor right, costs. Right, that's what I was going yep. to ask you. Was it that the increase in the price of the project? 
I mean, and not in the price, but increase in price of this was part of the overhead and the profit built we down. Moved, we moved overhead and profit right. in to get but a better idea of the payback. Right, but that's still the total of the project. Yes. Yes, the so, total is at the bottom there. The right, so in, even though the ECM cost went up the, of the actual projects to $8.8 .8 million, the total project went from 12 down to 10. With those two numbers rolled in. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. So we we took out some of your longer payback right. items. I, yeah, I, I, I made the comparison. I see what was dropped out right here. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a better way of presenting it. Not that you did a bad job the first time, <laughs> but that's a better we were way. Taking of, this some better way of, we were taking some advice. Yeah, this is meeting. a better way of presenting it than putting it out there. Chair, sure, I think we ought to give them two more weeks and let them come back again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we better get it down some more. Yeah, give them two more weeks and come back again. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So, so where are we at, Don? On well, the next? I think what we need to do is, yeah. is you really take some time to look at this and, and yeah. determine what kind of questions you have. Right. If you'll send those to me, I'll make sure that, that Robert has those, and then we need to meet when we meet on the 28th to do something in an action area with this. Yeah. I think in the meantime, they're going to have a meeting with the commissioners. I know there's been a request about uh, having them actually audit the the uh, tool. That they're the plan that they have with the county commissioners to see how that's working uh, to get some feedback and then we need to have that conversation on the 28th it's too much to ask i think to put this in front of you tonight and right. have you ask questions because you haven't had a chance really to go over it. but if you'll do that and forward them to me i'll make sure that that's part of the conversation that we have on the 28th and if anyone is interested um between um the commissioners and the energy committee uh, we have we have an electronic we have a, a real slick way to if we get your email address and you want you want to take the time to dig through some pretty technical stuff right. um, it's it's can be for for all of you to to take a look at so right. okay. just throwing it out there <laughs> yeah. no that's fine I, I like that well, well this part is I, I'm assuming if this all goes forward um, y'all propose to do this like a lump sum deal with not cost plus or no, it's um, with with the statute in North Carolina. Let's say on the on uh, I guess it would be November, sometime in November, November 9th, Let's say if everything goes great with the LGC, there will be a cost savings number. There will be a cost of the project that you will be borrowing, and there will be a cash flow. And basically everything. Um, will be guaranteed at that point and we will move forward with no no change orders and it will be like a 14 month um, construction endeavor with us out here nights weekends holidays and knocking this thing out what is the cost of a change order there is there's is no change orders by north carolina statute um, unless it's unless it's initiated by you guys we can't come and say hey we found this pay us for it it's it's all uh, it's all included all the the risk technically is on us because the costs have to be covered by the guaranteed savings so there's if there's a change to that then um, we we have to take Schneider has to uh, finish the work and make sure that the savings are achieved so okay, <clears throat> okay. so we're looking a couple more weeks we'll be talking about it then mm -hmm. with a little more knowledge Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That moves us over to the early college and Miss Payne. There's an attachment to that. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to share several areas of progress uh, with you pertaining to the early college high school as soon as um, we get the presentation running. Give you a little background knowledge, uh, especially for new uh, members and those of you that are not familiar with the early college and how long it's been in existence. Uh, we started in 2008. So uh, this is, we welcomed our eighth group of um, freshmen this year there we go. in 2012-2013 this was the first year that all five grade levels were filled at the early college and this is the first year that we had a graduating class um, one area that we are 
we are proud of is our increased enrollment. You can see that this is a four-year trend. It's the August enrollment for the past four years. And our maximum, MO, the MOU um, maxed enrollment at 250. We are working with the community college to increase the enrollment to 300. By next year, we'll be over 250, and in a few years, hopefully, we'll meet our 300 mark as well. So we are excited about the interest in Beaufort County um, by students and by parents. We had more uh, students apply last year than we ever have before. We had 150 applicants, so we're excited to see what we'll have this year as well. Uh, this is the NC report card comparison uh, for the past two years. You can see that in the first three indicators, our EOC proficiency scores have increased in every area. And with our English two proficiency, only one student was not proficient this past year. So we are very excited about the progress there. Also, I would like to point out the four-year gradua graduation rate. We were at 91 the year before, and we were at 100% this past year. Our overall school performance grade uh, grew from 88 to a 93. We, um, just to show you how we compare with other early colleges in the state, there are over 70 early colleges, and we ranked seventh. Um, and we are also number one in, nor in the Northeast region, our region, and we ranked 22nd in the state um, looking at the NC report card. Another important um, piece that the faculty and staff work toward each year is preparing students for college level work. This um, shows our ACT scores from last year and the blue bar represents the Beaufort County Early College High School. The red bar is state and the green bar is national and you can see in every area our students are over um, or more than the, the uh, state and national average. And with met all four, this means that 38% of our students were um, met the benchmark saying that they are ready for college level work in all of the areas on the ACT. Another thing that we, um, we look at is just compare, comparing our students just at the early college from year to year. And the first year that um, our students participated in the ACT was 2012. And then it goes all the way up to the purple 2015 last year, and we scored higher than we have ever before um, at the early college. So this is the four-year trend. College credit, um, we've had three graduating classes. We've graduated 97 students so far, and 62% of our students graduate with a two-year degree. 88% of our students graduate with at least the 40 to 49 hour mark. Um, and this is 40 to 45 credit hours at least that they've earned. So any student, even if they did not finish with the two year degree, they're able to transfer to a four year university if that's where they choose to go and they can start as a junior um, mm -hmm. without you know, even having the, the two year degree. But that's the ultimate goal. And the majority of our students earn the two year associates. The last slide uh, shows you what our students do after um, they leave us. 39 of our students, uh, this is about 40%, end up transferring to a four-year university. Um, about 25% of our students go to a two-year college. Some uh, will go to another community college because that, that college would offer a program that BCC did not. Um, <clears throat> And about 25% of our students enter the workforce after earning the two-year associate's degree. Two joined the military and two were unknown. Um, we've applied this year for the Innovative and Excellence Recognition with new schools. Uh, if we receive this recognition, we will become a visitation site for other early colleges in the state. And we should know by October 2nd if we will um, be able to continue on through that, that recognition <coughs> process. Does anyone have any questions about the data that I've presented or about the early college high school? Um, are you seeing um, any difficulty with any of your students taking those credits with them? Are there any universities that are not accepting some of those credits? Some of the private universities will not. Um, you know, it's gonna, the, they're going to follow the articulation agreement, so um, when they 
complete their associate's degree and they transfer to a four-year university as long as as it's one of the public universities they should all transfer it's but of so course out of state if they choose to go out of state um, you know all the credits may not transfer and the private schools will pick and choose okay um, but the students are aware of this I'm yes sure. they are yeah. um, as ninth graders they write career papers and uh, they decide you know they what they want to do after graduation and they have to research universities and these are conversations that our guidance counselor and and some of our faculty mem members have with the students once they read those career papers and that's a problem not just early college but as you know just across the board at high school that's schools, correct where we mm -hmm. offer courses that they can't carry with them mm -hmm. how do you uh, reply to a parent that says I want my child to go to early college. They don't want to because they want to play sports. Well, we have some several students that participate with other programs, other athletic programs, and they choose to um, still attend the early college and participate with um, travel ball sports, um, also rec ball, and also. Um, the homeschool group in Washington allows the early college high school students to participate on their teams. And we probably have about 15 to 20 students that are involved in the TEACH program that participate in athletics that way. Emily, uh, could I ask you, you said you, in my understanding, you said you had 150 apps this year? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Out of that 150 apps, uh, could you, do you have any, could you give me a number? of the African Americans that uh, was uh, that, uh, applied and was accepted? The, um, it's probably around 30, 30 percent, 30 to 40 percent. Um, if you look at our demographics, we're about, if you look at all the minorities, um, the minority groups is 50-50 if you bring in all of, if you look at um, our total enrollment, that, that may give you an idea of um, the minority groups. And I, I'm, I, I think I'm correct understanding that this program was designed for the African American males. Is that right, Dr. Fitz? No, it was designed to meet the needs uh, primarily of first generation college going students, which right. could include African American males, but everybody else as well. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. all right. Well, so are they not, are the African or male, are the, are the uh, African American males applying? Not as much as we would like. And when I, when I talk to individual students, um, it is the athletics that they miss, mm -hmm. um, and also sometimes band and JROTC, and these are programs that we, we do not offer, and um, I know it means a lot to some students, and because of that, uh, we actually have more females than we have males. We're normally 60-40, and it's, um, that's just a, that is a trend that we've seen in Beaufort County. But I think not having athletics at the early college definitely um, you know, some groups will not, some students will not um, apply because they, they want to participate in athletics. <coughs> and, and that's what you hear when you talk to parents out at the other schools. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, when they bring it up to me, it's always athletics, almost mm -hmm. always. So out of 150, spot, uh, 150 applicants, how many spots are they yeah, vying right. for? That's 150 Six. incoming freshmen? Well, the 150 yeah. applied. Uh, okay. freshman students and mm -hmm. is 60 to 65 that we can accept each year and how, what what criteria are you really looking for when you're trying to break it because I have a lot of parents to say mm -hmm. we didn't get in exactly. and, and they're yeah. wondering what their their we, son or we daughter follow didn't a have. rubric what keeps you, what keeps and um, we look at first generation college students um, we also look at um, you know performance in school attendance um, grades and behavior um, and we also have an interview process and you can tell a lot by the interviews you know whether the student really wants to be there or if it's something that they were pushed you know into doing and um, so all of that is all the, the, there's a score from the rubric and also the interview that's combined but we try to target our first-generation college students and I know that's not 
100% because I know some kids that are going out there who have that's college right. graduated parents but mm -hmm. but that's one of your that is one of the indicators mm -hmm. and you've also had some of your students also to apply at the nurse plus school also that's correct that if they couldn't get in both of them they go mm -hmm. and vice the person that's right mm -hmm. now let me ask you something else okay the 24 on, on the employment category what, what areas of employment are they going into? Different different areas. Business we have industry. elder um, welders. We have um, cosmetologists. You know, just different <clears throat> different jobs. Different. Mm -hmm. okay. Some of them with the two year. Degree some are with the two and year and some without. That's some. correct. Okay. And all our students, you know, still graduate with the high school um, diploma, and they have the college credit. If they need to take off a year, they can. We've had some that have and the very next year they start back at um, you know Beaufort or wherever they choose and they can carry those college credits with them that they earned at the early college now, can they can they take a like a focused degree in that mm -hmm. two years like cosmetology or welding or, yes okay or whatever nursing yeah well nursing, well, nursing is the only is program nursing. at the college um, that the students have to actually apply Right. to that program yeah. but um, all the other programs that are offered there are offered to our students yeah. okay. I have had the privilege of attending three of your graduations and I have to say that it is a very close-knit mm -hmm. group of seniors <clears throat> when they graduate uh, not that they're not close-knit in the other three high schools but it's it's a, a wonderful graduation and they just all seem to be very very close and supporting one another and and um, I think it speaks highly for right. their four years there yeah. so. I think we should give credit I think you know when it's due and the early college and Emily mentioned this when we got the ranking this year of school yep. performance throughout right. the state hey. early college was number one I mean there was nobody higher than them in the Northeast and I think that's a credit to the leadership mm -hmm. to the faculty and staff and the students that are there Chakwini primary was also in the top ten so we had a good showing but uh, early college was number one and well deserved Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Moving on. Okay. Thank you very much. And Mr. Clark, I believe something about a batting cage cover. <laughs> Do we get to call you Mr. Clark or Principal of the Year, Mr. No, Clark? I, that's why I called him Mr. Clark. <laughs> Principal of the Year has to call him Mr. Clark. <laughs> that's <laughs> Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, thank you for coming to Northside, too. Um, for having us. Yeah. yeah, that's right. This is a project that's basically going to cover existing batting cages. We're, we're making a drastic improvement to our batting cages thanks to the friends of the baseball program, which you're receiving a letter from. Um, they're, we've been using Reject, for those of you that are familiar with Beaufort County and PCS Phosphate. The, the base of our batting cages was reject. So we're cleaning up all the reject, pouring concrete, putting AstroTurf on top of the concrete, and then putting a shelter over top of the batting cages so teams can have batting practice during in inclement weather. Of course, not thunder and lightning, but if it's raining or if it's too wet to get on the field, it still will be good enough to, to be able to have batting practice. And all of this is being paid for by friends of the baseball program. Um, to be honest, there's probably a, um, a dual purpose here. Um, this field is the only field that has the adequate lighting and space and upkeep for, that, for a regulation baseball field in this end of the county um, to have night games and night practices. And of course, most summer league practices are at night, so these kids they can do a usage agreement with the school system and they practice at night using our field. That's the American, the Junior Legion team, the Junior Babe Ruth team, and any teams through the Bath or the Bellhaven Rec Department. Both groups use the field numerous occasions during the summer. And also, of course, our, both of our teams use it as well. So it's, a, it's kind of a dual project with the community and it's just, all it is is improving an existing area and I can hold up a map and kind of blueprint and show you what it looks like. I would have emailed this to you, but I just, all I had was a hard copy and I don't have the technology to make this any smaller than this. So um, that's basically what it's going to look like. The batting tunnels will be under the, the 
Cover. It's basically, a, I call it a big carport. Right. Because that's basically what it is. And it's just going to cover the batting cages that we have. Okay. Stan, yes, are you aware of what's going on here? Yes, sir. He has been involved with the court on this. Is it, are, are, everything's okay yes, as far as you got? Okay. All the funding, like I said, there's no Beaufort okay. County School funding involved. Uh, Wells Fargo and other businesses are donating the money to help right. build it. And so You're going to have it up okay. and running by baseball season? We're hoping season. to have it by baseball season. And, um, yeah, so hopefully it will be ready to go by February. I move just, that we approve yep. the project as presented. Second. Okay. Just keep up with it, Stan. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Proceed. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm actually uh, sorry to say Stan, but I think Russ. <laughs> Maintenance update from you. <clears throat> what I, good afternoon. Mm. I'll try not to talk so fast. It's not going to take yeah. me very long. Actually, we have a meeting at six. Talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wanted to come do, and me and Stan talked about it. We've been working together. He's he's done a lot for me as far as getting some pictures together, and I'll okay. go through that. I just wanted to showcase the Beaufort County Schools Maintenance Department. They are very, very, very overlooked. Uh, sometimes they're stuck in a in a mechanical room fixing an air mm -hmm. handler, or during the summer we work all summer when the teachers are off. So I kind of wanted to showcase some of the work that we have done. Uh, this is a new sink for Chakawini Primary. We re relocated the art room over to an old music room. This was a storage closet. Um, we went in there, located water and sewer, um, built them a little bad, um, a cabinet, added a sink, and the art room, I mean, that room is full already. I went to go take a picture of it, and I said, well, this picture looks a little bit better than the one there. She's got paint brushes everywhere. She loves it. The, little, the kids can get in there, wash their hands, clean up stuff. Um, we also replaced tile in room 107. They had an exi existing roof leak that we had fixed. Um, got the carpet a little wet. It was milled. We had a, this must smelled in. <clears throat> excuse me, must smell in the room, and we uh, we just got that retiled. This right here is something that I'm proud of. I know Stan's proud of. Um, there's this bullet here. There used to be another one sitting right side side by side. Um, over the summer, we had to get these things reinspected by the state every year, and the one that is now missing failed inspection. Um, it's a 500,000 BTU boiler. The cost to replace that exact boiler was about $9,100. I worked with Pete and my plumber and some of the HVAC guys, and we come up with the idea that a tankless water heater that supplies the kitchen was the best interest. This is a project sheet that I call um, kept on it. Through school dudes, the total cost of the project was five thousand nine hundred and seventy-seven dollars. We only have twenty-two man hours involved in it. We did it all in-house. Savings of nearly five thousand dollars when you look at what the just the cost was of ninety-one hundred dollars, and that's not including any labor. You would have to bring in an outside mechanical contractor because it's five hundred thousand BTUs. Both of these operate at one hundred ninety-nine thousand BTUs, which means we don't have to pay the annual cost to get it inspected through the state. It does not require annual inspection. It's the most energy efficient tankless boiler on the market at ninety-four percent condensate. So, I got a chance to work with Pete on that, and everybody in house in the maintenance department worked very well with it. Um, this is the natural gas conversion at Eastern Mel Elementary. I've been working with Gwen over at Child Nutrition and Jerry Boyd. Um, that panel, as far as electricity goes, is quite scary. They had so much electric stuff operating in that kitchen. So we worked with them to try to convert some of their appliances over to natural gas. And these are two of them here. This is the mechanical room. This is the behind the scenes. All the natural gas pipe run through. This is where it comes through the wall and goes over. That cost actually was $1,800, but we should, we, we should see a dramatic increase in savings as far as utilities go. This is Washington High School. This is a main water leak. Um, I want you to know that that's my plumber, plumber Danny Yost, there in a hole about 12 foot deep, as you can see. This is just something that just appeared over the summer. The whole yard out there turned wet. Um, our guys jumped right on it to get it fixed, repaired it well. I mean, we, hopefully we, ne we don't have to ever worry about this leaking. Um, they stayed till 8 o'clock one night to get it done so we wouldn't have to shut the school down the next day, you know, because of bathroom issues. 
us with, was the equipment that we recently purchased that allowed you to do that and go ahead and get on the job? Yeah, yes, sir. What was that? that was Pro Press. Well, it was an excavator and a Pro Press. Yeah. Um, these are parking lots that we have painted. We also have painted Eastern Elementary. These are the pictures Stan took for me while I was gone on Thursday and Friday. We got Chakwini Middle School, Northside High School, and Washington. We haven't um, painted the parking lot where the school buses are because of grass in there. But this is something we're proud of. This is appearance that the, the general public sees. They drive through every day, and it doesn't cost much at all. So just adding this, you know, kind of makes the campus just look a little bit more presentable. What light poles you time to take them? <laughs> I use our main lead. <laughs> yeah, we got a man with it. Um, this next one is something we're all proud of. We all work hand in hand. We work really good together with everybody. If it's the athletic club now, um, coaches, custodians. This is the Washington High School uh, football field. And you can see that thing's green as ever. Um, we work hand in hand with the athletic club and the coaches to get the turf and the sprinklers back in good working condition. Had some sprinklers that did not work at all. Some that only shot in a 30 degree area. That you know, and it's everything's got to work together to make it whole. So uh, we're proud of the the way it turned out to be. <clears throat> Northside High School just got converted and went live with a building automation system today. Uh, this is a screenshot that I took of this morning when I got to work. I pulled it up and looked at all the temperatures in the classroom. Um, it's going to take a lot of trial and error with this school. This school's had huge humidity problems, but it was something that was being installed over the summer and that we're proud of. It's actually one of Stan's capital projects. I'm not trying to take credit for that. It's just something that went alive today. Um, asbestos. We're required to do a three-year asbestos reinspection every three years. That's something that got conducted over the summer. We also had all the modular units tested and we are all clear there's no change in asbestos nothing to report so just figured i'd put that up there <laughs> this is something we're probably the most that's the one i like right there. proud of this is ec classroom that was added to south side high school it school. was done strictly in-house <laughs> minus one concrete work job that we had to have and it was done on the weekend i'm gonna go through here and show you some pictures one of our carpenters there standing with a <laughs> A shovel. Uh, we all put some sweat in this, including me and Stan. I'll even point him out in the pictures. That's him right there, supervising with his hands on his hips. <laughs> He's working real hard. Go there. through there. That's two of the custodians on the left with um, Southside High School. Like I said, we work hand in hand. They every time we come to a school, they're willing to drop what they're doing on their daily duties and work with us. Getting to be almost finished with the sheetrock on the outside. This is finished inside with a sink, washer, and dryer bathroom. It's another one of custodians, Charlie, here at Southside High School painting. Charlie, He loves Charlie. to work. This is the finished product. This was done strictly in-house by your maintenance department. That's good. They have a working kitchen and bathroom that yeah. all facilities contain in one, one this room. Is, this is another project sheet that I kept on it. <clears throat> um, we had a total of 381 hours, man hours, and I don't have a, a labor cost because each <coughs> employee is a different. Um, the total cost Without sales tax, it's thirteen thousand three hundred forty-seven. We spent seven hundred dollars in sales tax as a school system to purchase the products to get it done. Um, concrete was cut Saturday, August the first, and we finished the project first day of school. So we were booking it. It's only fifteen working days, and each trade, if if it was our electricians, our plumber, our carpenter, they all designed it together at work and made it all happen. I also want to add this as our last slide. Um, school dude was implemented when I first started in August of last year and since the first day of school of last year maintenance has received 4,046 work orders and we only have 142 in progress Good what job, does that mean Russ. you only have out of that you only have 142 that aren't completed mm -hmm. yes ma'am good job I like to work down at south side because I know you can't get the backhoe in there where you were working yeah, at that too. was all hands off yeah it was all, all hand, hand work, work. Okay, Stan, uh, we'll give you two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Let's do mine real fast, Dan. I'll talk real fast. Um, Russ has already, y'all have y'all's on our board docs. Mm -hmm. My 13, 14, Russ already addressed, it, already addressed the north side issues. My 14, 15, <coughs> Chocolate Middle School handicap ramps um, was completed just a few yeah. cents under which, budget. Hey, Stan, which one of those, are you looking yeah. at one of these attachments? The 13, 14 capital. We don't have that. We have 14, 15. We well, should have come through 
It should be much on our 13. We have 14, 15. Yeah, we it have should, 15 is what he's talking about. Yeah, it right? should be. Okay. I was going to say 13, 14. 13, 14. That's Russ's item. He just did yeah, best about Northside. He's got 13, 14 at the top of it. Right. It's, it's got both of them. It's just because it can't right. be more than a couple of items from 13, right. 14. Yeah. <laughs> it says capital update. You're right. I see it on okay. here. Now. Okay. Chocolate Middle School, we came under budget by just a few cents. Um, the handrails, we also poured some concrete pads around the school um, for gutters. Um, there's pictures attached below. Um, the next one you have is Southside Awning. Um, it was done by G.W. Walker for $895, and we came in $1,105 under budget. Moving to our 15-16. Um, Northside, Northside High School concession stand. They unloaded the lumber this afternoon. Wasn't the parking lot a while ago. That was being built by Port of Bath builders um, out of Bath. Y'all see, see on the next um, slide is Washington High School tennis courts. Um, was resurfaced by Northside Resurfacing in Wendell at a cost of $32,000. They did a great job. They were very informative about everything they did, the processes and the cracks, and it's very, very nice project anybody that hadn't been out. Um, next picture is our new mini excavator. It was purchased under capital for $4,820, and we came $179.22 under budget. It was purchased from Rob's Hydraulics of Grimesland. Um, very, very nice machine, and this picture there shows Gary Buck operating at, at P.S. Jones kicking off the concession stand project. Um, Bath Elementary um, fence project, somebody, several has asked about it. It's scheduled to start um, September 17th, weather permitting us this week. Um, all the materials are on site, so just waiting to get out there and get on it. Um, the Bath Elementary kitchen roof replacement was an addition to our capital project. It has been put on and completed. Um, this was due to termites. Um, the deck and parapet walls and interior walls were treated for insecticides to prevent termites. Um, this project came in at budget two. It was done by R&S Roofing of Grifton, North Carolina. As fast as I can talk. Okay. Yeah, that's um, the one we just approved recently, right? That we talked about. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, okay. I have several things for. We move to the next one. Or it's your choice. I see it. Anybody have any questions? Um, I probably do, but why is it action? <laughs> Don, why is this an action item? Are you getting ready to bring something up to us? Yes. Okay. I've got four things I need approval, I think. Under what heading? Gotcha. <coughs> Recommend the capital projects. It's something you don't have to bring Lisa. up what he's talking about. Supposed to be out there on board docks. Looks That's like that. 15-16. 15-16 15, 15, is what it's listed. Capital as. update. Mm -hmm. Capital project list. Yeah. 15-16 capital update. Okay. Mm -hmm. the ones with the Item number seven. Yeah, it's nothing. Everybody up? Yeah, I got you. Item number seven, um, walk behind the scrubber, was budgeted 7000 with tax. It came in $115.96 over budget, and that's, that's purchased through um, government, state contract. Okay. So I need approval for it. You want to just cover the other one right quick and we do them And I need approval time. for the um, two purchase buffers, it's $1,300, and it came in $19.44 with tax. Okay, Net. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion is, okay, I'm sorry, I was gonna say something. Go ahead. Yeah, we got a motion a second, just a, a quick note. On the 1300, you don't have to bring that to us, right? What's that? The one for 13, you didn't have to bring that to us. Is there a limit, Lance? Five, well, on capital, we put a $5,000 limit. But we'll just go ahead. that it went over what was originally budgeted for capital? Is that why it's coming up? <laughs> Okay. Right. Right. Well, we're going to approve both at the same time. But I was just thinking, if it was under there and you don't have that issue, then you don't have to bring that to us. Okay. But anyway, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? If not, all in favor, approve and say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. You got it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Next one y'all should have would be P.S. Jones concession stand. <coughs> yep. Um, y'all give me approval in the previous meeting. Um, to negotiate with DB&H, which was the low bidder on the project. Um, we were budgeted 80000 It came in at 89400 So Russ and I met with them, and we negotiated the things of demo, demo and the concrete. We'll be doing the soil, and then we did a couple of change orders as far as the gauge of steel. 
um, from 24 gauge to 29 gauge, but we got the project down to $78,332. Okay. Motion to approve. And that was the cost share for from different sources. Yes, sir. We're going to do the plumbing and we're going to do the right. demo. We've already done the demo. It's already completed. So. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions before well, we have a motion and a second? And I think everybody's real familiar with this. Any other questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next one is Washington High School Fieldhouse. Um, the, the bid came in. Now yeah, I don't see that one. Came in within budget. And got my numbers here 64,000. I love my note back there. It came in at 44,000 base bid. So we had, I don't know if y'all have this document showing the. Not 44,000. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, that can't be right. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't hear Walter fall out of his seat over there. So <laughs> something's not right. 440. We had several deducts that was in the bid um, that could deduct it from that price. Um, one was remove the entire air conditioning system at 73,000. Um, alternate two was remove the stairwells with access to the air conditioning system was 41,000. Um, remove the stairs and storage room was 11,000 and remove the ceramic tile from the janitor's closet was 1,600. Remove the cabinetry and countertop from office and storeroom was 2,600 and remove the cabinetry and countertop from the training areas 3,500. Um, my recommendation is we do not take any deductions and then they also had an alternate add of the stain and seam metal roof, which the way it's base bid is with shingles. Um, the school was all stain and seam roof, and my recommendation is that's 27000 to add the roof. But when you're standing back there, you actually don't see the roof of the school. You see the roofs of the concession, right? Am I correct? That, yes, that's just what one of the contractors that was sitting near me when the bids were open said um, you don't really it's not like you're seeing the the roof of the high school and then you'd be seeing the roof of the con, uh, field house and they'd look really different I'm not I'm not opposed to the stainless seam I'm just I'm wondering if that money would be better spent somewhere else but I, I'll leave that up to the people that know better Okay, wait a second. That puts the, what, it, yeah, you got to get back over shingles, these. What kind of shingles yeah. is it on? 30 years thick? It's pressed, yes, it was based with a 20 year architectural, mm -hmm. uh, 20 year basic shingle is what it was bid for. You don't, year three tab, you, you, you don't want to do that. No. 20 year three tab versus standing so, scene. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's not even a comparison. But there was a small price increase to go with the 30 year too, wasn't it? Um, that was just talk after it wouldn't put in our price, but um, Mr. Walker, what was the difference in putting a 30 year? Yeah, it wouldn't be a lot. Versus the 20 versus the 30. Yeah. If you're going to use shingles, you've got to go architectural. You can't use I agree. Those, you can't use 20 year tabs. No. What kind of slopes on the roof? <coughs> What's the pitch on it? Yeah. I don't know. I got the full blueprints in the truck. It's. Was it 312, 412 at least? At least. Okay. Yeah. So, what are you needing from us tonight? Yeah, I was going to say. We've got to have the final approval because it's, it's okay. never the been final approved by. Okay. The final for approval on to go ahead, or, the, or are you needing us to make yeah. a decision on the roof? Before the contract can be signed, we have to make a total decision on the Is full price. I got no if it's four hundred and forty thousand. Okay, yeah, go back over four hundred and sixty-seven thousand with the metal roof. So four forty cup well covers covers the building as be it. That's everything with all the interior furnishings, countertops. But we can change over the the minor stuff on the architectural. And then to add the standing scene would be a twenty-seven thousand dollar ad. We we'll put it at four sixty-seven. Okay. And how, how much do we have? Four fifty is what we got from the commissioners on that. Four fifty. Mm -hmm. And then the the folks at Washington had had up to a hundred thousand, but there are several things inside. I mean, we don't want to open a building that's bare, so right. they were using a lot of that money to take care of that. For us, it would look like it's about sixteen or seventeen thousand dollars out of capital is what we would put in from the school system side. If, to get if we went with the we metal, can we swing that? Yes. Just alone one project, well, I, I just say, saved. Um, looking over at CMS, we saved how much money? I saved over fifteen thousand on that one roof. Right. I don't. My figures are back yeah. there, but we should have more than sixteen thousand in savings from previous projects. I think. Uh, we're I think we'd be, I, 
fund balance. My feeling is we need to go on with the yeah. and get it. My feeling is I want them to have a better roof. What I don't want is that to cost the boosters right. more money because no, I, they're going to spend a lot of money outfitting no. that field house. No, I think we can cover the cost. Yeah, I think we can cover the cost out of our uh, capital savings on these other projects. We're well above fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars in savings on projects that we've already completed. Well, we had to do that termite but thing. Is this cosmetic yeah. or is it because something's wrong? It's a brand new building. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, the, okay. This is okay. Right. The, the lifetime of the same. Yeah. Yeah. same roof will have about a 50-year life on it, yeah. and it's going to be a much saying, more. What? What is it? I know it to 30 years. Looking at it, they go with that. But keep the rest of the other stuff in. But then that drops. It's going to be a better quality roof. I think that's that back on. I think we're 27 is for the metal. Stan. Yeah, we saved $16,550 in Chocolate Primary alone. That's just one. And every other capital purchase besides the two, the buffer and the thing, I've come under so far. So. Okay. But the only thing that carries us to 467, did you not say, is the metal roof? Yes, sir. If we stick with the three tax, I mean, if we go back to 30 year architectural, that was only like, say, $1,000 or less. Correct. Oh, we can do a change I, order in progress. I'm talking about tacked on to the 440,000. Right. So we're not even at the 450. Right. Right. So all we need to decide is if we go with architectural, it's going to cost us 441, let's call it, or 467 if you do metal. Which means we come up with 17 and you just said 17, okay. which is above the, the right? Mm -hmm. Above the 450, we'd be 17,000 more. And we've already saved right. close to that just in but one job. One but do you want the metal back there? That's the that's the question for the group. Is there a um, preference? From yeah, the is there a preference from the group? I, I would say we don't have a preference from our standpoint. I mean, we were basically so we got some good projects that we could do with the metal. Okay. Because we can get shingles, so I don't think we have a preference. Okay. Does the shingles match the other building? That was the other part I heard you mentioning it. But what are the other buildings around it? Two buildings have shingles, but there are older buildings too that probably going to need to be replaced before too long. So but they're standard black. They're standard black. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Well, Chairman, I moved. If, if you're in the okay. if you're in the bus parking lot, this building is going to be a large building. Right. And, and I know the gym Thank is you. tall, but you're still going to. If you looked right. around, you're not going to. It's not going to match. And, and I Which is not going to match. The, the, the shingled roof is not going to match the roof that's on the rest of the. It'll campus. match the, the rest of it is metal. Stands, right. It just won't match the um, okay. school. And, and I guess worrying about matching is not as big an issue as but I'm looking a 50 at the year versus the 30. Year. That's what I'm looking and at. That is a big difference. Maintenance and everything else. Now, I know yeah. there was there were some issues with wash with the roof at Washington with the color, so uh, uh, right didn't didn't have a repaint or refinish. Well, it had faded over the years, and then when they coated it because of leaks, they had to we match the coating so it didn't change okay. the roof. But they, you know it, it had faded. Um, maintenance wise, you would prefer. Yes, sir. My recommendation is the metal roof if the county can <clears throat> if the school system can afford. It. Mike, where are you going with your motion? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna flip flop now. I'm gonna <laughs> go back and I'm gonna say let's let's find the money, let's get the metal roof and if they right. help make us that let's go with the, the total figure, whatever it is. Four sixty seven. Yeah, 60, I think 60, in the long run that's gonna save you money actually. I don't well, think Mr. you wanna go. I want to just yes, make sir. one comment. Yes, sir. When we get ready to change the roofs on them other concession stands, I want us to get a metal roof there put on them. Go. I want them all to bleed. I together. agree. Yeah. That makes when the time happen. comes, I don't want to put no more shingles back there. Right, that well, I think 100%. one of the desires is down the road that you would actually, the concession stand yeah, would be on the park and, yeah, take down okay. what's there and it would be on the pad attached okay. to the field house. So we have a motion to go with metal. Anybody seconding yeah. that? But I got a second. Any other questions? So we'll cover the cost of it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Put the metal to it and go that route. What's the um, expected construction duration? Duration? Yeah. Um, three to four months, depending on total when we get turned around. Okay. All right, then I have one more action item. Okay. And we're going to run out of money. Yep. I know. That we're going to run out of time for out of money. <laughs> no, this, this, this one is in. It's just we just need approval. <laughs> we run out of time. I'm going to turn the notes gotta... all around. P.S. Jones. Did we, we talk about it? Okay, I'm sorry. I got confused yep. on that. I line. thought we already done right. that. That's all four. That's okay. Uh, four motion proof. Oh, yes. That Eastern Elementary. Um, it was put out for bid yesterday. Okay. Um, it was in the paper. I've had three calls today about it, so it is out and underway. Um, Pre-bid meeting is September 22nd, and the bid actual bid receiving will be November 14th. 
13th, 13th, 14th, 13th. I was sent out an invite to everybody for both. Okay. Why didn't they have any phone service today? Did you know that? I don't, I don't know why they didn't answer. <laughs> they couldn't, okay. they didn't have any phone service today. Okay. Yeah. We have that occasionally happen at other schools too. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know if that's a maintenance thing or a technical thing. Right. I guess it's. We did pay the bill. Other department, but <laughs> we did pay the bill, yeah. That's no, I'm, the first yeah, I meant the there. There. If you okay. called, you couldn't get up with anybody. Oh, okay. yeah, they sent out an email first thing this yeah. morning that it was down. I'm not sure yeah. why. Mark Mailer takes yeah. care of that. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any All other right. questions for me? That's it. Uh, Mark, I believe you're up. Thank you, Mr. Lynch, for dropping by. Um, I think we can give you about, about three four minutes here. I won't even need that long. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. This is our annual uh, beginning teacher support program oh, yeah. uh, approval by the board. Each year, the state of North Carolina requires that every school system have a yeah. beginning teacher support program, mm -hmm. and that every year we bring this program back to you and have you approve it. Well, um, the only major change in our program, it still continues to cover all of our first, second, and third year teachers, offers various opportunities of staff development and support. Um, we in the past had used retired teachers as mentors. I talked to you last year about the fact that we were going to go away from that and use our existing teachers. Uh, fortunately, we were able to find some federal money to also pay our existing teachers to serve as mentors. So they're already been assigned. They're in the building with our beginning teachers. Uh, they were already helping. This was more of a way to allow them to, to actually make um, a very small amount of money for doing what they were essentially already doing, which was serving as mentors. Um, they're also going through an online module mentor training. Many of them have been trained in the past. This is just kind of updating them on licensure information and what's required of beginning teachers. This also just starts states all the different ideal situations that for beginning teachers and for mentors um, and talks about who's required, who participates, and how we monitor it. We are evaluated every five years through an annual audit, uh, a large audit where they search through all of our files to make sure we're following all the rules for evaluations, et cetera. But we also have a yearly monitoring visit. And one of the things that's always on the checklist is has the board approved this beginning teacher support program and had an opportunity to talk about it. So that's why I'm presenting it tonight. Move and approval. Second. second. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion oh. and a second. And I'll just come in. And it's like a $75. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. They get paid. Right. So not a lot okay uh, any other questions if not all in favor say aye, aye. any opposed okay got Thank another year and I think that would bring us back over to you mr. Don for some field trips if you open up your field trip attachment I'd like to ask for consideration of these all at one time and I'll go through okay. them and explain if you don't mind the first two 7153 and 7159 both of the same field trip it's to White Lake North Carolina and Bladen County it's an FFA project to the natural resources hands-on camp it would involve students from Northside and from Washington that would be taking a bus. And we also have a third school in the area that would like to bus pool with us. So I'm not sure if we'll use their bus or our bus, but we're trying to combine resources to keep the cost down. Uh, uh, the nurse bus school in our, the regional school. The um, next one is 7082. It's the Science Olympiad in Raleigh, uh, taking a minivan. Then 7156 is Northside, along with 7158 Washington for the FFA convention in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, they'll take a charter bus. And I'm not sure if Southside is going to be added to that or not. Yeah, I, right. I can't yeah. remember if they're going yeah. or not. And then finally, the 7250 is a DECA conference that we have mm -hmm. each year in Greensboro. All of these meet the criteria with regard to number of students and chaperones. and. Uh, all the proper paperwork forms and whatnot mm -hmm. have been filled out. So I'd like to ask for your consideration for approval for these field trips. Move approval. Okay. Okay, on field trips, we have a motion to second. Um, any questions for Don? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, any aye. opposed? Okay, Don, thanks. And I believe you also have something to tell us about a joint venture. Project 5.7, I had a, a phone call uh, from Harvey at uh, Vidant a couple of weeks ago and said they had an idea that they would like to put the AED devices, and Butch, you may be able to help me with the acronym. I don't remember what AED stands for. Automatic external defibrillator. Okay, it's, it's to mm -hmm. help someone who's in, in heart. Cardiac arrest. Yeah, yep. cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. And they would like to place these in the high schools and then train our individuals to be able to use them. It certainly would be a life-saving opportunity if they hopefully would never need to be needed, 
use, but if we needed them, they would be there. They would pay the cost, and then would like to see how that goes, and then mm -hmm. possibly put them in middle schools. This is certainly a no. This is a win-win situation here. Uh, no cost to us some training for our folks, and then it may help somebody in the school on a regular basis. It may help a visitor who's there at some point in time. But I didn't want to do something like this without you at least right. being aware of it. And I thought we could get back and have it as a, a matter in the minutes with approval. So I'm seeking your approval on that joint project, which will cost us no money. Uh, a, a joint project with Vidant and we work on the training uh, from the medical trained professionals to our folks that are in our schools. And this is high schools? High schools to start with, and then we look to expand that possibly if we could. I think our high schools already have them. I was going to say, yeah, I've heard talk, awesome. I thought we already had them. Um, the, I, think any, I think any high school who has athletics has to have them. Yeah. Are they, are they I, I know, I know yeah. there's at least one here at Northside, if not two. Are they portable? Yes. Okay. And I know Southside has them. Okay, I'll check with that yeah. and see if it's something else. If we can extend it to middle school, if we don't have those, can we do that? I, I'd yes. love to see them in every school. Okay. Right. Yeah. But okay. I'm pretty I sure all the things would be great to have them in every school. Yeah. Okay. And, and they'll be available practice games and all of that. Mm -hmm. But if, if Northside has one, I'm sure I know Southside has one. Yeah. So I'm assuming Washington they're not, must. They're not just friends. Right? No, but if you have it, we'd you have, have to determine to have who would be trained. If you have it, right, but, but we mean, certainly I, would want somebody who's at school. I yeah, we had different people, so they're already. here all the time. Yeah. Yes. Are they only at schools that have athletics? I, I know the schools that have athletics have to have them. Yeah. Well, at high schools, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about middle schools, but I'll find out. I'll, 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 I'll extend it as far <laughs> yeah. as we can afford well, to go with them. Especially your larger populated schools on on. On an average, they're going to have more people in any event they have. And just and, and check and see because I'm, I think we have them in schools more than our high schools. Uh, I think so. I, I think we already have them. I think because I'm 99% I'm okay. sure that they have them at the middle school. Okay. But having additional ones is, is still. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. That's a, a great thing absolutely. to have. And any training, too. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but um, to give him permission to move forward with that, do I hear a motion? Second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So expand them wherever we need them at. Okay. And I need a motion or would like to entertain a motion to go into closed session. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under General Statute 115C-321 and General Statute 115C-402 and USC 1232G wow. under student records. Okay, do I hear a second? second? Okay, I have a motion and a second enter into closed session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're in closed session. All right, we're now back out of closed session and the first order of business is to approve the personnel agenda dated today's date. Uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. Oh, second. Okay. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the personnel agenda. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And Don uh, Calendar, I believe, yeah. would be next. We've got September 14th tonight. We've got our first community forum for strategic plan. We have tomorrow night at Washington and at Southside uh, on Wednesday. A question has come up from a couple different folks about our timing, and we, this is just the first of some several meetings that we're going to have. So if we need to go back and look at that at a, a different time and locations and stuff, we'll do that as we move forward. And then we have our, our monthly board meeting is on the 28th of September at 530. It'll be back in the boardroom at the Central can, Services. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. Would it cause a big hardship to everybody if it was moved to the 29th? You know, it would actually greatly benefit me. Well, actually, I know Carolyn has a conflict. And after I, I check, I think I may have a conflict, too. So not that you can't run a meeting without Carolyn and I, but I mean, I'm just asking. It would be one if you could move to Thursday that we Well, what is that? That would be October 1st. Oh. Oh, OK. Well, it was about that Wednesday, if you do it early. That would be the 30th of September. I can, I can do any of those days. The 30th is better okay. I mean, that's, for me. That's fine with me. Just, is any, anything other than Monday. Does anybody have a conflict with yeah. Wednesday the 30th? No. Okay. Is that okay with you, Matt? What, okay. what time? What, what do you call early, Matt? Uh, you said early. Early is fine. Five. 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 The five o'clock? Can we do it at five? Time you want or is, oh, is that too early? I mean, is there a reason it has I to? Have, yeah, I have a night out for that afternoon, but I can get, get here about five, maybe. But we'll be back at the regular at the office by then. I mean, five central five. office. So five. We just have to do the public notice and get that out. We can do that. Okay, so yeah, we'll do five p.m. on the thirtieth. Okay, the thirtieth. 
And Lisa, send that out for us. Yes, sir. Thank y'all very much for that. No, I was just, I was going to say, how, how is that going to affect the general public? But I'm, that meeting normally will be on 530 because that's the meeting that they come to. Yeah. We'll is there a reason why we'll just, we can't do it at 530? Well, we can do it at 530. I was just trying to see if everybody, because it was Wednesday, I was thinking you'd want to get out early. 530 is uh, fine with me. That was all I was thinking. But we'll make sure it's the highlight of a date date change and a time change. Okay. Keep it at five or five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. 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 That way, somebody. And this one time by. shouldn't bother people That's too it. much. We can get them out to church in time. So That's right. Still gonna say five. Five o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Any board member updates? We, yes. well, we we hope you do. <laughs> mm. there. Twist the arm or two, Miss L. <laughs> we look forward to your update. You know, okay. Okay. Any superintendent updates? Well, the, the budget was approved today, my understanding. They have not released details, but we've been told that they restored funding for driver's education. Again, we don't know exactly what that means, so we, we don't have anything to announce to the public. But we'll have something hopefully by this end of this week of what our schedule would look like. Our goal would be to put everything back to where it was last year with the parents paying $65 or whatever that dollar figure was and <laughs> start classes back. The other thing they did was restore teacher assistant funding. But I think there may be some confusion that as folks think that means we're getting more money. We're not getting anything more. We, we budgeted for this year based on what we had last year. And, and the proposed budget had cuts in it, and they've gone back and restored those cuts. So all they gave us back was what we had last year. We, haven't, we, we didn't net anything. We just haven't lost anything. And when we talked with the commissioners, we said if we got additional money, we would give them that money. We haven't gotten any additional money. We're going to be able to maintain exactly where we're at with the help that the commissioners have given us. Right. But we still have a local, a large number of folks that we've got on the local side that we've got to address. So we don't see, <laughs> haven't seen the educational budget details yet. We'll know that, and, and I'll be able to share that with you as we get that information. So okay. first signs are positive in terms of what it could have been. So we're right. grateful for that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if there's nothing else said, I will entertain a motion. Okay, we have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. We'll see you in a few minutes at another meeting.